Hey, Crystal Maiden here, and I'm here to show off what could be the greatest Sonic game ever made. Sonic Generations. Well, that really depends on my mood. Like, if I'm in the mood for something like... Something with a huge world that I'm traveling through and... Like, shortcuts and stuff. If I'm in the mood for something more slow-paced, but still fun and 3D, I'm gonna go for Sonic Adventure 1 over this. And if I'm in the mood for something 2D, I'm gonna go for Sonic 3 over this. Well, I say that, but the camera is so panned out in the 2D in this game that you can actually see what's ahead of you. Fancy that! I mean, you're still trapped at the center of the camera, but... I just feel like because your character size is so much smaller compared to, say, Sonic 4 and Sonic 2, you can actually see what's ahead of you better, so I feel like the 2D sections, they work a lot better than the actual 2D Sonic games in some cases. So you're playing as classic Sonic here, a first for the series, well, <laughs> no, more like a first for the, the past classic era series. He returns in a new upcoming Sonic game, and it's pretty controversial, so I'm hoping that that kind of controversy he caused will cause Sega to realize, you know, let's not use him again in a 3D game. But yeah, his physics are not exactly like they worked in the original game. Like, I... The problem I had there was that I was holding down to roll into a ball. Like, the thing is that in the classic games, a lot of the time, you would go down slopes or loops, and you would hold down on the control pad to curl into a ball, and that way you would actually go faster. I was holding down there, and he kept on running normally. And there, I was holding up to try to keep in ball form. Sonic has a major uncurling problem in this game, and that can really throw you off. Like, badnik bouncing is still there, so that's good. But the uncurling is kind of an issue, it means that you can't go quite as fast as you want to. But I'm saying that, but look at the spin dash! I absolutely love the way the spin dash is in this game. You go so fast and so far, like, the acceleration is ridiculous. Like, I spin dashed constantly with Classic Sonic, and it's easily the best spin dash in the entire series. And I like how you can just mash the X button and there you go, that's how you spin dash. You don't have to stop, and then press down, and then the jump button to charge it up, and then mash A a couple times to rev it up, and then spin dash. You can just quickly mash X a bunch of times, and there you go. Took a while for me to get used to that idea and actually start pressing X, and, and a lot of the times when I would go... A lot of times that I would actually forget that there was a spin dash button like an adventure. But yeah, like, for the most part, I love the way Classic Sonic plays in this game. Even if he's not exactly like he was originally. So, like, there's not really any major landmarks here to tell Sonic where to go. So how does Sonic know how to, how to go here? Did, did Tails just say, Oh, just go to some random tree in the middle of the park and you'll find it. Basically, a lot of Sonic's friends are here, and some of them are portrayed as just one-dimensional cardboard cutouts, like Amy, for example. I don't know why Rouge is here, since Sonic hates her, and the Chaotix are here, even though the Chaotix hate Sonic, and Sonic hates them. Knuckles should be guarding the Master Emerald. Why is he here? And why is Blaze here? How did she manage to get here from the Soul Dimension? Sonic, what's that? Sonic's chili dog gets sent far away. Why didn't he just run up to it What's to catch it? Why did Tails give him a mere chili dog for birthday present? Like, can't he just give him, like, a invention to make his life easier or something? Like, Sonic can get a chili dog anytime he wants. And how old is Sonic anyways? Because he's supposed to be 15, but this is his birthday party, so is he 16 now? Apparently not. So the Time Eater captures everyone but the hero of the world that would be the most likely to defeat it. Really? I really like the performance of that line. I actually feel sorry for Tails there. He's easily the best acted character in the game, which is ironic because he's uh, a boy character. But he does have a 
a grown-up actress this time around, so that makes sense. And like, I like this, aside from the extremely boring white setting, because Sonic actually looked vulnerable there. Like, he, he had his eyes half-closed, and he was unconscious, and he woke up. Like, I like that. It's nice to see him vulnerable for once, considering how often he's portrayed as, like, perfect and awesome. But I just don't, like, I just don't understand why the Time Eater didn't trap him like, like it did with the rest of his friends. Like, that is the, that is the most stupid Eldritch Abomination ever. Like, really? Why did Eggman decide to leave him alive? But yeah, this is Modern Green Hill, which has a pretty nice remix. I just absolutely loved what they did with the aesthetic of this place. Like, they had tiki statues and waterfalls and, like, all sorts of things to make it feel more like a tropical area. And, like, there's... they added purple lakes. I mean, there's barely any there, but that helps to make it feel more fresh and new. As for the gameplay, the 3D sections are extremely mindless because you just boost ahead in a straight line. Like, it's just like in Unleashed, like everyone complained about. The 2D sections are full of alternate routes, but, like, a lot of people say that Generations has tons of alternate routes, but I'm mostly only seeing them in the 2D sections. And there's nothing to do about that. You perform tricks off ramps by pressing down in, like, other directions on the, con on the control pad. Like, I used the control pad for this game, even for the 3D sections, because it turns out that actually controls better than using the stiff analog stick. That is just sad, you know? A game made in 1998 has much better 3D controls for a control stick than, like, a modern game, which has you better off using the D-pad. But yeah, you can see from my life counter that I've got 98 lives by this point, because I basically played this for the first time, and then I went back to replay this a huge amount of time so I could grind up to 99 lives. Because I figured, just just be careful, you know? It's kind of overkill for generations, but I just wanted to be careful. Like, you've got the, the twisting corkscrew line things. I think they're called Mobius strips. You got those, even though it's like... you think that they would be an emerald hill zone, but... It would be redundant to have both of those levels in the game, so it's nice that they decided to reference it, at least in that sense. If you have the controller input button, like, on in the hints, then it'll tell you to quick step there, because that sends you to a dash pad. I don't know how you're expected to feel satisfied hitting a dash pad when you're already boosting anyways, though. Will that burst of speed even matter at all? But yeah, it's a fantastic level. Don't see why I had to return in forces, but, you know, like, it's pretty fun. Easily one of my favorite levels in the game. Unfortunately, I had to... Like, I'm hey, playing son, with the Unleashed Bond most of the time. I dead, floating without a body in a black limbo. <sighs> I'm gonna have nightmares for weeks. This is his reaction to that? And it just fades to white to load another cutscene, even though that, that cutscene we is in the exact same location. Familiar. Even Sonic Adventure mm, 1 didn't do that. It just takes like you out of it. But more importantly, Tails just says that he was traumatized by being paralyzed no and fully conscious and the whole time. And what does his older brother react to it with? He doesn't even look concerned. Hey Sonic, I saw something over there in the distance. Like buildings, well, what I was saying earlier was I usually use the Unleashed Sonic model for this, be because it actually soon. looks good, although it doesn't do anything about the cutscenes. And that's why I had to get most of the cutscenes wow, for this, for this playthrough off YouTube, because you the Unleashed Sonic model completely messes up in the cutscenes. And that's really disappointing, mm. because I really hate how the modern Sonic model looks in the cutscenes. He's so unsympathetic looking. And... I would have loved to see the Unleashed model there, but no. It looks really boring having it, like, be all white. And they return to color, like, I guess as the whole excuse for why you have to, like, beat the zones. Because it's not like there's a boss at the end of them. To be honest, I don't really like the story of this game. It's very underwhelming and full of missed opportunities. I think that they would have been better off just having you go from level to level. 
Usually I advocate games like, especially Sonic actually trying with the story, because if they're going to waste development time on a story, then they need to make it not a waste by making it a good story. But the story of Generations is just, just very underwhelming, and you can tell that they cut a lot out. Like, like Classic Tales just suddenly appears and there's no explanation for it, even though we only saw Classic Sonic in the one pre-rendered cutscene in the game where he first appeared. And they don't make fun of Elise or anything like that. No real references we have. The biggest problem I have with the story, aside from the fact that Classic Sonic suddenly is mute all of a sudden when he's been talking more often than not in the Classic era, but I'll get into that later. The, the biggest issue I have with the plot is that it's got massive time paradoxes because we have the classic selves meeting their modern selves and the classic selves find out everything that happens in the future. Especially classic Eggman, like, how is this not going to radically change the plots of the past games once they actually unfold from the classic perspective? Like, I hope that's the explanation for the ruined future and forces, like, he fixed all of his past mistakes. Because, seriously, like, the, the whole time travel and generation thing, kind of, it kind of has a problem where it could have, like, retconned all the games before it because of the telling everyone what's gonna happen, and then it happens thing. Even though 6 didn't do that. I didn't mean to barely talk about the level. It's really fun! I, I really like it. It's fast and fun. It's got satisfying platforming. I mean, I wish that... Like, when I was in the water areas, I immediately missed the infinite underwater double jumps that Colors had. But that's not really that big of a deal. And you're not even in the water for that long. Like, a general chemical plant zone is everything that Sonic 2 wished it could be. There's no annoying enemy placement. There's no annoying enemies that are guaranteed to hit you with projectiles from far away. The level was actually fast and fun, and it was in Sonic 2 as well. But another thing is that it's impossible to get crushed in this game. Like, you can literally be sandwiched between a wall and a moving yellow block, and you're not going to get crushed. Which is really convenient. Like, it's really thrilling to play. There's a badass electric guitar and techno, like, remix playing. This is the best version of the Chemical Plant Zone theme. I like how there's at least one instance of drifting in 3D in this, because that's the thing, there's really not that much 3D drifting in Generations. Which is kind of what helps to make the 3D sections not feel nearly as exciting as, say, the Unleashed Project, where you weren't just boosting ahead and that was it. Like, in general I love this level, I love the platforming, I love the, the thrilling areas. Although I don't like the pace breakingness of like, you have to stop and boost into a yellow block that stops you, and then you have to wait for Sonic to push it. I love this, like, boosting through this water tunnel, although the frame rate goes to hell when you do it. And I actually got, uh, the game crashing with a buzzing sound in that water tunnel. In fact, I also had the game crash on me right before I pushed the yellow block the first time, when I boosted into the wall. Like, I've had bad experiences with this level crashing on me. It was only when I ran the DC Overrider thing that removes graphical flickering. I like how he just gravitates to the top of the water when you boost. Like, and the fact that you jump so high up when you're underwater. Like, it just feels like you can completely skip all the underwater platforming because you can just jump really high. And I like how you got launched up by that thing. Like, the platforming in this is really satisfying. This might be my favorite level in the game. Which is shocking, I know, since most people think, like, Rooftop Run is the best level in the game. I'll get to that later. But yeah, this is pretty fun. Got a really cool, badass aesthetic to it. Especially here! Like, with the exploding fire and everything. I love the red sky and, like, the dark blue and yellow, like, the colors and, like, everything like that. Like, this- this area looks amazing! Those water things are kind of annoying. 
Sometimes the camera can glitch out here and make it so that it's tilted and it's sort of halfway into a 2D perspective even though you're still moving around in 3D. That happened to me the first time I ever played the level. But this isn't my first time playing this in the recording. And now we have a pointless cutscene where the characters remember Chemical Plant this Zone. Chemical plant Except they don't, because Sonic does not like really this. remember it. How does a hydrophobic forget really Chemical Plant so Zone? Seriously, how? I mean, you think that rising water section where you have to carefully land on tiny blocks to avoid getting crushed or drowning, you think that would be permanently etched into a hydrophobic's memory? Unless he repressed it. I can understand Tails not really remembering it because he was only three years old when Sonic 2 happened. Because 8 minus 5 is 3. But how does Sonic not remember? And like, that's the only zone in the game that has a cutscene like that. What a way to completely destroy Amy Rose's character. It's like she only values him as a person Thank she can so flirt much. with. Wow, you look what were they thinking day. when they wrote her like this? And that's basically the reaction that Classic Sonic always gets from Sonic's friends, is that they're like mistaking him for modern Sonic somehow, even though he looks radically different. It just portrays the friends as complete idiots. It just, it's character breaking humor, not character humor. Like it just portrays the characters as the, the wacky sitcom neighbors that Sonic is there to be superior to. It's like bad fan fiction. 